Welcome everyone. Good morning. Awesome. It's a new month. Amen. God is so good. All the time. Awesome. Will you all rise to your feet? Let's worship the Lord. It's time for some worship and praise and dancing. We're going to worship our living God. He's awesome. Yes? yes. We're going to start off with, you know, a thanksgiving. You know, God has been good. The whole of September was great. It was a month of miracle and supernatural. So we're going to take a minute. We're going to move around. Find one person. First, wish them, greet them, then share your testimony for September. Okay, we're going to give you two minutes. You, you cannot share it with your wife. You cannot share it with your friends. Find someone new, walk around, greet and share your testimony. Two minutes. Here you go. We say
Lord, we thank you for September. Lord, your grace and mercy has been chasing us continuously, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you for all the blessings. Lord, thank you for everything that happened in my life, good or bad. We believe that it is with your purpose that it has happened, Lord. Thank you, Master. Lord, we surrender this month, this new month into your hands. Lord, we are waiting to hear from you, Lord. This new month, we are waiting to hear from you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we bow before you in worship. Lord, we bow before you with thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we surrender the worship. We surrender the word into your hands. Bless us, Lord. Bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said,
Together we lift up his praise. Together we lift up his name. He's not a normal God. He's not normal. He's better than you think. He's better than you think. Let me figure out. Put your hands together. Our God is awesome, right? He turned the water into wine. He opened the eyes of the blind. God is great. 
chose Anchorage Church. This Sunday morning, we chose to be here. We chose to be in God's presence. Are we happy? Yes, sing it together. Better is one day in your home. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your home. Thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your home. Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. Hey, I can only by your glory what will my heart feel will i dance for you jesus or in all of you be still will i stand in your presence to my knees will i fall will i sing hallelujah will i be able to speak at all i can only imagine We're gonna make our praises loud. And he's been defeated. Death couldn't hold you down. We're gonna lift our voice in victory. We're gonna make our praises loud. Enemy! The enemy's been defeated. Death couldn't hold you down. We're gonna lift our voice in victory.
Shout out to God. Shout out to God. Shout out to God. Shout out to God. Together. Shout out to God. Shout out to God. Shout out to God. Shout out to God. Yahweh. Shout out to God. Your God, Amen. Shout out to God. Shout out to God. Shout out to God. Shout out to God. It's weak. Shout out to God. I think people are fasting. That's why. You know, let's give some energy to it and praise the living God. Say shout out. Shout out to God. Yahweh. Yahweh. God, Yahweh, Yahweh, shout out to God, 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 Jesus, shout out to God, Jesus, Jesus, shout out to God, shout out to God, shout out to God. Better, better is 
of God only becomes better and better. There cannot be anything else that seems better than the goodness of God. He's a father who does things that are new every day and his word says his mercies are new every day. The steadfast love of the father it's new and fresh. If you want to experience that goodness, 
then you need to renew your thought, your relationship with the Father God fresh every day. It cannot be, I spoke to you yesterday. It should be, I want to talk to you every day. Are you ready to tell the Lord you are good to me? Are you ready to acknowledge that he is good to you? father and nothing compares to his love and he knows just what is right for us amen he knows how much we can handle he knows what we can handle and he knows when he should let us handle it amen he doesn't push anything on us he doesn't force anything on us he has given us a free will Amen? Are we ready to say thank you to this Father? Is our heart filled with gratefulness? You know, our life changes when we become grateful. When we are ready to say thank you to this good Father. I'm not saying God. I'm saying good Father. Our attitude towards life would change. Our character changes. Hallelujah. Even as we are fasting and praying, it's purely that God wants to restore that first love. Amen. He wants to restore the first love. All of us have a story. All of us have a testimony. Amen. As how we were and what we are today. And the day that we found the true love. Amen. All of us have had our parental love, our uh, sibling love, our relatives, friends. But above everything, it was this love of God. You know, that touched you. That brought about a world of change in us. And at that moment, you know, all that we wanted was Him. 
All that we did was about him, to him, for him. Right? And he meant so much to us. And he wants to be that even today. And when, when we were like that, we saw that everything was so easy. Everything was made light because we held on to his hands. We held on to him. Amen? The more we grew, the more we started reading the word, we thought we knew too much about him that we started moving away. Our experience in the world made us feel, oh, I've got so many years of experience. You know, our CV highlights the number of years of experience. Nobody wants a fresher. But you know what? Your creator wants a fresher. Your creator always looks at you fresh. And with him, that's a very important criteria. Hallelujah. Are we ready to give up our experiences and say, I'm a fresher? I'm a fresher. Every day I'm a fresher. You know, when we become fresh with him, when we become fresh with this word, nobody is going to ask us for our experiences. Wherever you are, I stand a testimony. When he puts you somewhere, he will see to it that he will guide you, he will favor you, he will protect you and keep you. Amen? And nobody is going to tell you, what was your experience? What did you do before? Where did you? Maybe they will ask, where did you learn this? How come you're able to do something out of the box? But nobody will say, from where was your experience? I can challenge you on that. And today, God has something beautiful for us. Nine months he led us. And all of us have been waiting on promises. God has spoken so much to us that he would do this. He will guide you. He will lead you. He did it. Amen. Last month was a month of miracle and supernatural. But, you know, all of us have been experiencing so many miracles that we don't even realize it's a miracle. It has become just normal for us. But this month, you know what God says? He says, I am the Lord. In its time, I will hasten it. He's the hastener. He's the one who speeds up things for us. If you think, you know, nine months have gone and I'm in the fag end of, my, of this year and I have not seen much. I expected something, it didn't happen. Let me tell you, the God of Kratos is the same yesterday, today and tomorrow. When he says something, he will do it. He will do it at the right time. Not when we expect. It's not all the time that when we expect, it's the right time. When he does it in the right time, he knows it. He knows your timings. He knows your time. And he knows when it has to happen. So many times we push, pull, struggle so much because we want something to happen today or tomorrow. Oh, it is now. But you're not ready for it. If you had been waiting all this while, let me tell you, it was just because we didn't know how to handle it or how to handle that blessing that there was a delay. Patience is very important. And the Lord teaches us patience. Amen? If we grumble, we are not going to see the blessing of God at all. Grumbling, murmuring, cribbing all this does not help it only takes us away from the presence of god when you surrender yourself then you know everything will go just the right way wait upon him wait upon him and he will speed in it up it's a god speed time that he's speaking over us during this month of october amen he will, he is a god who can make things happen like that I want to give you an example, Numbers chapter 17. When we read, the Israelites were cribbing. They wanted a leader. They wanted someone to lead and, you know, something to happen. And then God said, he commanded Moses to get a staff from each of the 
family. He brought from the leaders, from the families, the 12 tribes, he brought a staff. And they had to write their names on the staff and put it there in the tabernacle. So Moses obeyed. He took the staff. He went and put it there. The next day morning, when all the people were gathered, Moses went and picked up the staff. And what they witnessed was the staff of Aaron was already blossoming. You know, it... A staff is a dry stick that they use. The dry stick got life. It started budding. It started giving fruits. Amen. It, it had leaves, it had fr flowers, it had fruits and ripened fruits. All this happened overnight. How many of us are ready to give everything that we have to the Father, Lord? Say, I surrender so that he will speed up the process in our lives. Amen. Is it possible for a plant to grow so fast? People wait for months and years together to get one video to show how a seedling becomes a plant and a tree. Amen. That's how it is. But there's no technology that can make something like this happen. But so many years back, God was able to do that and show it to his people and it was a sign. And today, he says, I will hasten it. He's the hastener. He's the Lord who speeds up things when it is the time and when it is his time. So let's just commit ourselves and say, Lord, you are the Lord. You are my God. You are my everything. And in your time, you will hasten it for me. Are we ready to confess that? Amen. Shall we say, Lord, you're the hastener? Lord, you're the hastener. In your time, you will hasten it for me. You will speed up things for me in your time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will bring to pass all the blessings, not a few, but all the blessings. He will bring to pass all the promises that he has spoken over you. He will bring to pass all your prayers. He will bring answers. He, will, he has already sent forth, but it will come striking on you when it is the right time. All your prayers will be answered. A and Amen. 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 He is a God whose name is Amen. And he will bring it to pass as A and Amen. Hallelujah. The things that you waited upon will come to you. Will come to you as a pleasant surprise. Will come to you at the right time that you will only rejoice and you will not be sad about it. When he blesses you, there's no sorrow added to it. Amen. You are not going to say, oh, why did it happen now? You will be ready to receive. And you will say, good, it happened. It happened at the right time. I know a lot of us are waiting for a lot of prayers, a lot of things to come to pass. And we are saying, Lord, how long? Now we will stop saying how long and say, Lord, in your time. In your time, you will hasten it. We will keep telling him, you're the hastener, Lord. You are the Lord who will speed up things in your time. So do it according to your will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we ready to surrender? Are we ready to get whatever comes with God's speed? Amen. Amen. Are we ready to receive? You should get ready. Only when you're ready, you, are ready to, you will get, be able to receive it. And only when you surrender, the Lord will be able to work. Hallelujah. Are we ready to step into the 10th month expecting newness every day? Amen. Let's keep renewing. Let's keep praying. As we are into this 21 days of fasting and prayer, I would encourage all of those who have still not joined us, join in. And it's so beautiful the way the Lord speaks to us every day and the way he shows up for us. Amen. God bless. Shall we welcome Pastor John?
Hallelujah. What, what is happening to my mic? It's too loud. Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands? Can we shout a hallelujah? In reverence unto God, unto the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That means, shall we praise God? Amen. Is He worthy of your praises? He is worthy of all your praises. Amen. He deserves all glory in this place. He is the one to be exalted in this place. He is the only one to be glorified in His house. He sits in the praises of His people. He is enthroned in the praises of His people. So, can we get up to our feet? You know, even, even when uh, in the corporate world, when when somebody gives a speech or outperforms expectation or maybe in a, in a sport field, somebody outperforms, people do standing ovation, right? So, so what we are doing now is a standing ovation unto God. Can we clap and glorify God standing to our feet? And can we clap, keep clapping? Whoa. Whoa, that's so good. Thank you, Father. Be glorified. Be glorified. Even as your people are glorifying you through their hand claps. Probably we do not know to play instruments, but we have our hands, Lord, to glorify you. We give you glory. Take all the glory. Take all the praise. Take all honor. Take everything that is due unto you in your house. Come, Father. You are our King. You are our Lord. Come, take your place. Do with us what you want to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Can we be seated? The Lord is so good. Amen. The Lord is so good. He is so good no matter what. Whatever our situation is, whatever, however hard it is, He is still able to turn it around for good. Even if the enemy has meant something for evil and sent it your way, the Lord will turn it around for your good. Because goodness is the virtue of God. Please don't, don't mind me saying this again and again. You know, whenever I get up on the stage here, probably you, you tend to see me speaking this, that He is good. Yes, of course, I will, I will shout out loud from the rooftops that He is good. Can I hear you also say that? God is good all the time. God is good no matter what. Amen. He is worthy of your praises. He is always good and goodness is His character. So He sees you through His character called goodness. He does things to you through His character called goodness. Amen. He intends to see His people blessed. He intends to see His people live well. He intends to see that you are doing good. Don't we ask people when we meet them, how are you doing? When, when, when God the Father asks Jesus how, how people are doing, He wants to say that they are doing good. Because His mercy endureth forever. Because there are new mercies for every day. Amen. He knows that He has bestowed His mercy upon you. And that's why He's 
wanting to say always that you are doing good if you realize that you are in Christ Jesus if you know that Christ Jesus is in you you will do good you will do good as much as you do good on the inside you will also do good on the outside that that's my own version of 3 john verse 2 as much as you prosper in your soul as much as you prosper in your soul the bible says i'm not saying as much as you prosper in your soul you will do good in everything else amen there is only one who can prosper your soul and and that one person's name is jesus christ jesus can only prosper your soul if you need soul prosperity it is only jesus who can prosper you and when you prosper in your soul you will do well in everything else around you and for you to be prospering in your soul you need his word his word nurtures your soul his word feeds your soul there is nothing else that can feed your soul apart from his word i'm sorry i want to correct it there are so many things in the world that can feed your soul i didn't say the previous statement wrong but if you mean your child to be fed for a better growth you know how you will feed your child will you feed your child with poison will you feed your child with something that will deteriorate her her or his health mm. you want to feed your child that will help that child grow well right so i'm talking about that kind of a growth and that kind of a growth can only come by the word of god that is fed into you the world can feed hundreds of things to you but it is unto destruction and this word that is fed inside of you will filter what should go inside of you and what should not this word that is fed inside of you will help you discern what you should be doing and what you should not be doing that's how the word of god helps you in everything say an amen amen and that's why you need to sit under the feet of god under the feet of jesus in the presence of god and and keenly listen to what he is speaking to you because his word can change t- things around for you it could have been a long wait but now when god says that i will hasten it he says i am the lord and i will hasten it so whatever he has spoken over your lives maybe that was from your childhood whatever he has promised you maybe that was only yesterday but then the lord is so intentional about fulfilling his promises he will not let you go without fulfilling what he promised over your lives amen i i'm sure we received the promise of the month with the gladness how many of you received it with gladness can we give a hand clap offering unto god for the promise of the month it is the month of the hastener the one who hastens things now he will be at work throughout this month to let you enjoy your promise fulfillment your promises will be fulfilled to you without delay without tarrying much your promises will come to fulfillment whatever he was speaking from the beginning of the year until today now we have got into the 10th month 10th month itself denotes a, a, a kind of divine completeness those seven can mean 
fullness and completeness but 10 means a divine completeness and in this month he is going to complete so many things that he started with you and let me tell you something his completion over few things in your lives will be the very start and the beginning of some things in your lives say an amen if you have if you have sought the lord for something if you have been praying for something he will complete what you have been seeking for and that will initiate you to start something new in your lives and your t- lives will turn a new i'm saying a new i'm saying a new that nobody can can compare you to what you have been in the past but now it is going to change and that is the promise of god that is the word of the lord over each of you who is believing him believe him for greater things and you will experience greater things in your lives just as he promised even in the last month he did he did so many things that we cannot fathom we cannot fathom with our own minds the things okay for you for an example if i have to tell you i i came to know uh, probably it was it was uh, thursday i came to know something that shook me in fact if it did not happen then i might have been in a big trouble seriously i would have been placed in a big trouble which which should have taken some months to sort only on thursday i came to know from the authorities that they also were shocked to see what has happened with my case i mean in terms of something to do with the governmental authority that i applied and then it it came through and we could we could do things after that and and it is one month back probably by the 24th of august we got it through but now last thursday i go there meet the authorities and say that this is what i have come here for and they tell me a list of things to do and some payments to be made and then they say only after this this thing will happen and that one thing was very important for us which should have happened way back but i was so troubled and we were just hoping and praying that the lord will do it for us and i approached the authority in the month of august and i got it through amen can we give a clap offering unto god and now the authorities are wondering how that happened so you see it it need not have happened there wasn't a possibility for that to happen but it happened but i didn't realize that this is what it is sometimes we don't even realize how god saved us from a certain thing that we did not see are you able to think with me just because we did not see the harm that was coming to us just be- because we did not physically battle with something that was coming against us it does not mean that it did not come against you it came against you but even without your knowledge you were protected amen god is serious he is serious in the business of protecting you he is the pillar of cloud that is just beside you that is just behind you that is by your side i have i've always quoted this from from the old testament from the book of exodus um chapter 14 if i remember when the when the israelites were coming out of egypt and they were running and these enemies people from egypt with their chariots horsemen and all you know all possible people in ranks they came behind them right but when they got near the bible clearly records this so that's why i love the bible how many of you love the bible amen every single word that is recorded in there is going to speak to you it is it is kept there for a reason i'm 
telling you, it is kept there for a reason. The Bible clearly says that the pillar of cloud which was in front of them suddenly moved and went behind them. Just so that uh, that can be the protection for these people from the enemies. The enemies were at a hand distance. They were just approaching, they were very close. But the pillar of cloud, the angel of the army of the Lord is with you, protecting you on all sides. Receive it. Amen. No matter how harmful the enemy can come at, come against you with how powerful he can be. We don't care how powerful the enemy is. We care about how powerful our God is. Amen. We care about how big, how magnificent, how powerful, how sovereign our God is. Amen. You are serving a great God. You are serving a sovereign God. You are serving a powerful God. You are serving a God who can do things supernaturally. Amen. And that is why you are protected today. That is why you are protected from those unseen harm that came to you. Amen. I was, I was so thrilled when I came to know that we, we just passed that and, and got our things through and we worked. And so that saved a lot of money. Some money in five digits, I'm telling you. That saved us from spending that money. Because we got it through. And we don't know how we got through. It is the Lord who did this miracle for us. So I'm telling you, like he said, he performed everything he said. Like he said, like he promised, last month was a month of miracles and supernatural in so many people's lives. You have not heard the testimonies of many people who are sitting here. They have received their miracles. If you tap into the promise that is spoken here, if you tap into the word that is preached here, you will be blessed according to the word that is preached. Because we are not bragging anything about our own selves, but we are bragging in the Lord. We are boasting in the Lord. We are preaching the plain, infallible, powerful word of God that never falls to the ground. The word says, even prophecies may fail. Heaven and earth may come down, collapse. But I want to reiterate this. The word of God will never fall to the ground. Amen. What he promised, he will fulfill. What he said, he will do. What he has spoken, he will perform. And he is so faithful to doing that. Amen. Amen. And so, once again, I want you to tap into the promise for the month, which goes like this. I am the Lord, I will hasten it. So he speaks about the restoration of things. If you, if you want to try look for this verse, you need to look from uh, Isaiah 60 verse 22. If you have to understand what God is speaking, then you need to look into the whole uh, set of 21 verses before that. And now, people of Israel, they were in exile. They were under oppression. They were, they were under slavery again. They were oppressors over Israel. And that's when God chooses to say that He will hasten whatever He has promised. And that is when He says, to you, kings will come. And that is when He says, the darkness will cover the entire earth. But because of the light that is in you, you will be looked for. How many of you are tapping into this? Because of the light that is in you, you will be looked for. And the Lord says, I will hasten what I am saying. I will make people look for you. If you have to understand that, you need to read 21 verses before 22. And you will know how the Lord is planning for a complete restoration over your lives. First of all, it is going to be a spiritual restoration. And then it is going to be a natural, physical, earthly restoration. Whatever you have to be blessed with, nobody can snatch it away. 
Whatever God has ordained for you, He has already destined certain blessings for your lives. Nobody on earth, nobody underneath the earth, nobody from the second heavens, that is the re heavenly realms where, where there are battles going on, the powers of darkness and the, and the spirits of the darkness, you know, they battle. Like, like Pastor Victoria was mentioning, your prayers have already, already been answered, but then there are also some battles going on in the heavenly realms that your answers are getting delayed. But God has assigned angels for your sake. Those angels will fight it. Those angels will get you the victory and bring the answers for you. You know why Daniel was fasting 21 days? Did he even plan to fast 21 days? Every time we fast, we say uh, 21 days and then Daniel fasting and all that, yeah? But then did Daniel actually plan 21 days? He didn't plan 21 days. He was fasting. He was seeking the face of God. He was, he was seeking the help of God. He wanted to understand what the vision meant for him. It was, it was not for hand-twisting God that Daniel fasted. We need to understand our fasting does not hand twist God. But it gets us into a better position with God where we understand what His heart is for His people. What His heart is for you. Amen. Can I hear an amen to that? And that's how Daniel fasted. He wanted to understand what God is speaking to him. And he said, okay, let me give up on, on food. Let me let me get my flesh down. And that's how he fasted. And on the 21st day, he had an encounter. And that is how we see it as 21 days. Now, even as a whole, as a church, as the corporate body is fasting during these days, I want to tell you something. The Lord is going to reveal himself in a deeper dimension, in a greater dimension to you, even as you fast. Like how Daniel was able to understand what the Lord had for his people, you are going to know God, know God's heart. And that's why we have themed it as rediscovering the first love. Our fasting prayer is themed as rediscovering first love. The Lord wants you to get back to first love. How was it when you received Jesus in your lives. It was good, right? Was it good? Thomas, was it good? You had a different feeling, right? It's so different. It's so joyful. And, and some kind of confidence kicks in. Right? That's how you feel. Now, can I ask you, where is that confidence? You know why we lack confidence? Because we lack on loving on God the way we should. You know why we lack confidence? Because we lack on the authority that is given to us. We do not know what we can do. We do not know what we have to speak in times of trouble. We lack on these things we lack in, in the relationship with God and that strips you of your authority. Am I clear? Can I be more clear than this? Your relationship with God is equally proportional, directly proportional to the authority that you will carry. Say an amen. And if you know Jesus... If you have known God, the God of the Bible that I am preaching about, you will know the authority He carries. If He says, it is done. If He says, hush, be still, every storm in the ocean will come to a standpoint. 
you will see only calmness after his word maybe before that it was a raging storm it was something that that was wrecking your boat wrecking your journey like however hard that is as as hard it can be as stormy as it can be please do know this one thing you are carrying jesus on the inside of you and if he commands the storm to stay still it will stay still and so your eyes need to look at jesus your eyes of the heart your focus should be on jesus who can storm, who can calm the storm amen now when you start when you start this journey it's going to be a little little well it term scary but still you need to know jesus is in your boat so when jesus is in your boat will your boat sink are you going to sink with jesus he will take you to the other shore he will take you to the place that he has promised to take you amen now this is this he does for his name's sake this he does because he is present in you so without magnifying ourselves s e l f right our self our own selves without magnifying us in the scene if you magnify god let me tell you you are sure to cross over cross over into the promise that he has promised for you nothing can stop you no river can stop you no wall can stop you you will yet get into the promised land you will yet get into your promise and you will enjoy the goodness that is lying there in the promise say an amen amen now today i was asking them today was one of those days where i didn't know what to talk i really didn't know what to talk so i was checking with god what am i going to speak to people here who will come in expectation have you come in expectation how many of you came in expectation is the lord speaking to you already now when i asked him i felt this one thing in my heart so i wanted to um design my sermon in the shade of the promise that was spoken this is true but i couldn't whatsoever he it is like see i am saying that i'm going to do it what are you going to even preach about so now i want this to be to be very very stern and steady in your lives he has spoken he will fulfill it he has said that he will hasten whatever he has promised you he will bring it to pass and i'm not going to preach about it because he has said it he will do it but what i am going to preach about is a very old topic very old subject faith this is what he laid in my heart for you again faith which is amazing so the title of today's message is amazing faith have you heard this term amazing grace today i'm going to speak to you about amazing faith so amazing grace is about the lord but amazing faith is about you amazing faith is what your faith is amazing faith is how god is amazed by your faith aren't we amazed by the grace of god how many of you say yes to it yeah what is his grace see we weren't good enough to receive whatever he has blessed us with we were of the darkness yet god chose us we were not his friends we were not good we were sinful but still god chose us and that is so amazing amen bible says leaders can die for people who are good but then for you and i 
who weren't even good. Okay, now I need to explain this. For people who think that, oh, no, no, no. I haven't drunk. I haven't been drinking. I haven't been doing this. I haven't been doing that. I haven't been doing something wrong for the society. I've always helped the poor and all that, you know. The good things, good things, good things. You have a list of good things that you can talk about. When, when, when the Bible comes at you saying that everyone is a sinner, how many of you had this feeling? No, 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 no. I am not like that. I wasn't like that. But then let me tell you, there is sin nature inside of you. At least there was. Until you got Jesus inside you. Whether you literally sinned or you literally did not sin, you were still sinful. Because this sin nature was passed into you by your bloodline. And whoever was born on earth, can I see hands who were born on earth? So I'm not talking to aliens, yeah? I'm talking to human beings. And every human being is sinful, born sinful. Because of the disobedience that Adam displayed, that sin got into every human through bloodline. You're considered, you're seen as a sinner when you were born, not because of anything else. If you misunderstood, then here is a correction. It is not because of anything else that you were considered sinners. For some of us who think that it is because a man and wife comes together in flesh and then, you know, a baby is born. Maybe is God talking about that as sin? No, that's not sin. But what is sin? Sin came into you in your bloodline from Adam. And so you carried that sin nature. I'm not pinpointing anyone here and, and telling you that you have the sin nature. But then you need to go back to the Bible for every, uh, everything that is preached. So you can test what is preached. So the Bible says even Paul is saying that he wants to do few things but he's not able to but he keeps doing the things that he does not want to and then he says it is because of the sin nature that is in me so the whole thing is about doing away with the sin nature amen and that's why you need to have jesus inside of you and that's why you need jesus that'll take away your sin nature at least, I need to be clear, you won't be looked at as a sinner anymore after you have Jesus inside of you. You become righteous because of Jesus who is inside of you. You don't become righteous by anyhow, but you become righteous by Jesus who is inside of you. He calls you the righteousness of God in Christ. So the righteous people lift their hands up and shout a hallelujah. Only the righteous people. Oh, okay. I saw some doubt kicking in. You are righteous. I'm speaking to each of you who is listening to this. You are righteous because you believe in Jesus. Because you have Jesus inside of you, you are righteous. Nothing apart from Jesus can make you righteous. And these righteous people have a right standing with God. When you have a right standing with God, then you claim your sonship, then you claim His promises in that right standing and you will see it come to pass. And that's why you need to relate with God on an everyday basis. Now, I, I told that I'm going to talk about amazing faith. What is amazing to God? What is impressing God? Your faith impresses God. And your faith can be amazing sometimes. It can, it can let God marvel sometimes. Are there examples of that amazing faith? Yes, there are. Can we have uh, Matthew chapter 8 verses 5 onwards? When he had entered Capernaum, 
a centurion came forward to him, appealing to him. Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word, but only say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and then he does it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and the west and recline at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Unto the centurion, Jesus said, Go, let it be done for you as you have believed. Go and let it be done for you as you have believed. And the servant was healed at that very moment. Servant was healed at that very moment. When the word came out of Jesus' mouth, that transformed into a healing for someone. Amen. Do you want to receive this for somebody else out there? Somebody else back home? Maybe thousands and thousands of miles away. But if you want to receive a healing for that person, you need to tap into what is spoken now. Because at the word of Jesus, people will be healed. And he doesn't even care about that person who has to be healed. But this one representative who came to him, saying that you say the word. Have you come with that heart today? For Jesus to say a word over your lives, it can work for you. It can work for anybody that you are praying for. It can work for anybody that you are believing for. I'm telling you, He is so powerful. He doesn't even need to be physically present in a place to take care. He takes care. He takes care. Do you know that Jesus is here? How many of you feel that Jesus is just next to you? Is he physically sitting here, physically seen here? But is he with you? Amen. So his presence can do marvelous things. And now you see this man, Centurion. Oh, he doesn't have the he doesn't have the qualification as you expect. His resume is not what you um, shortlist. He is not a believer. Now, at that moment, he became a believer. But he wasn't a believer. He wasn't a Christian, basically. He wasn't even a Jew. He wasn't anything to do with the temple and whatever you see as, as those people who handled the religion in that place. He had a clear pagan upbringing. He had this, I want to tell you about how a centurion functions. Yeah, Centurions are like, they are leaders over 100 soldiers. So it's a high rank. So now he had, he should have, okay, I assume, he should have proved himself to be cruel enough to become the head of 100 soldiers. Because the, the work of these soldiers is to oppress the enemy. You get where I'm going, right? So now he is the head of these 100 people. So his, his qualification is an oppressor. 
was an oppressor but what is it that jesus saw in him so clearly this is not the resume that we will expect god to bless but then is he blessed indeed he is blessed not just being blessed but he he turned jesus to him he turned the attention of jesus to him and the bible says that jesus was marveled at what he said can we have another um, uh, similar reference from from luke uh, luke 7 luke 7 verse 2 onwards there a centurion servant whom his masters valued highly was sick so centurion was valued very high masters were even valuing that particular centurion very high right was sick and about to die the centurion heard of jesus and sent some elders to elders of the jews to him asking him to come and heal his servant when they came to jesus they pleaded earnestly with him this man deserves to have you do this because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue jesus went with them he was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say him say to him lord don't trouble yourself for i do not deserve to have you come under my roof that is why i did not even consider myself worthy to come to you but say the word and my servant will be healed for i myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me i tell this one go and he goes and that one come and he comes i say to my servant do this and he does it ninth verse please what happened when jesus heard this he was amazed at him this is very important you see the account of matthew and the account of luke both records that jesus marveled at what the centurion was speaking there we saw in 8 10 that he was marveled here we saw we see in 7 and verse 9 jesus heard this and he was amazed at him and turning to the crowd following him he said i tell you i have not found such great faith even in israel then the man who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well so now there there's a little difference between the account that matthew gives and the account with uh, which luke gives but anyway the recipient is the same we do not know if he had a personal encounter with jesus or he sent his people to receive his word but however it is you see this one underlying thing about the centurion he believed in the authority of jesus say an amen what does this teach you the authority of jesus and that is the faith that can be amazing so this is this is like this yeah he can do whatever say whatever jesus can do whatever can i have it recited again Jesus can do whatever whatever it takes he will do it for you just because now you said that whatever it takes he will do it for you now centurion did not care about who he was he did not care about where he is coming from he did not even care about his his he was considered to be an enemy of the of the Jews he did not care about all that but he knew one thing maybe we do not know what was that incident that touched the centurion but he was touched but he knew the power of Jesus he was so he his his focus was on the power of Jesus say my focus will be on your power his power can do or outdo anything Amen. 
His power can turn things around for you in a moment. The Bible says, in a moment He was healed. The, the right moment when God releases the word, when Jesus spoke, the servant was healed. Amen. Look at this. The humility of the centurion first. He mixes faith with his humility. And now he says that, Sir, you're not, you cannot come, even come into my house. You cannot even come into my house because I am unworthy. And then the Luke's account goes, you know, still a long way where it says, I haven't even come to you personally because I consider myself unworthy. Now, what is he about? What is he saying? He says, you just say a word. Can I, can I have that recited now? You just say a word. God, you just say a word. And it will happen. Amen. Whoever said that, I'm telling you, if you believe, you will see glory of God. Amen. If he said it, he will do it. This centurion was nowhere near Jewish principles, Jewish law, Jew. He wasn't a Jew, he wasn't a Christian. But he gathered up his strength, knowing that there is power in this man. Let me go to him, let me speak to him, let me ask him for a miracle to be done. And yes, it, it was a miracle. Amen. When, whenever you go to God with an expectation, Amen, He turns to you. But He sees your heart of faith here. Now, Centurion says, I, I'm also under authority, which means I understand what authority can do. His faith was based on the authority of Jesus, not anything else. His faith was not based on anything else but just the authority of Jesus. Now, how is our faith today? Is our faith looking out for some signs around us? Some bank balances? Our position at work? Our house? Our family? Our friends? Influential people that we know? Is our faith mixed with all these things or just humility? Now he says, if I command somebody, he will go. And, I, and so I understand what authority is. And so now I ask you, Lord, that you just say. I know when you say, it will happen. You just need to command. Now let me tell you, this will be our best ever prayer. Asking God to command, command goodness over our situation. Asking God to command everything to turn good for us, everything to turn around for us. If there was something that you are battling with, like, like the servant was battling with a sickness there, but, but the centurion knew to clearly place it on the authority of Jesus. Now, Jesus did not know about the servant. We do not know if the servant believed in Jesus. We don't know all this. Let us not make stories out of that. But Jesus did not care about that. He cared about the one who represented. He cared about the one who spoke to him and said, God, just say a word. Master, just say a word. If you say, it will happen. This is all I know. That's what he said. Now you see, both these writers, Matthew and Luke, they have got this um, word marveled or, or what is the other word? Amazed. From this one root word called tamazo. Tamazo. T-H-A-U-M-A-Z-O. Tamazo. And tamazo means amaze. This is the only one word where, where it, it, it clearly depicts the word amaze. From there, the word amazing in English comes, yeah? So now, I want you to turn your Bibles to um, Mark 6.6. 6. In contrast, you see, where Jesus was a native of 
Nazareth and there you see th- is this good to read i don't even know he was amazed at their lack of faith come on here in capernaum he is amazed at his faith he was amazed at the faith of the centurion but here in nazareth he is amazed at the lack of faith so he marveled oh what is this how much ever i do whatever i do whatever i exhibit so he was exhibiting the father god on earth he was doing whatever the father god asked him to do on earth he was speaking to his people whatever the lord the father spoke to him he he revealed himself as the representative of the father god the creator god and these people were always claiming that yahweh is god there is no other god than yahweh but they failed to receive jesus they failed to understand who jesus is because they were too familiar with him i think this drives a very strong point for all of us to understand don't become familiar with god don't become familiar with jesus if you think oh i know him oh jesus right oh i go to this church called anchorage and every day we speak about jesus and you know we have heard a lot about jesus and i can also even in my sleep i can talk about jesus yeah oh is that right that's good if you say that but what is your heart for jesus don't familiarize jesus these people people of nazareth they familiarized jesus they thought this is my neighbor this is the carpenter's son what good can come out of nazareth this was their understanding so if you are people who are who say that i have been a christian for so many years now i'm 30 years old 32 years old i'm 46 years old and i know jesus no no i don't want to say that i i really don't offer to say that i know everything about jesus what we have seen is only a little if you are with a willing heart if you want to know him more he will reveal himself to you in a deeper and a greater dimension i'm speaking about the heart of jesus that goes for everybody who calls on his name this centurion was nowhere near faith at that time when they introduced now jews for them to come and talk about a centurion it was very new and they even say that he helped them build the synagogue so now jesus who knew all this it wasn't a first information to him i want to tell you the things that you think are first information to jesus aren't first information to jesus he knows you he knows your life very well he knows your heart very well he knows your intentions very well they aren't first information to jesus you cannot give information to jesus like that and so he is not the one who does things by by just a report of somebody but he knew that person very well centurion very well and now when he says he says i am so marveled at your faith so this is the same word used in mark 66 also where he is marveled at the disbelief now that's the contrast now you see an, on another account matthew 8:23 please matthew 8:23 and when he got into the boat his disciples followed him and behold there arose a great storm on the sea so that the boat was being swamped by the waves but he was asleep and they went and woke him saying save us lord we are perishing and he said to them why are you afraid you of little faith then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea and there was a great storm a great calm and the men marveled saying what sort of man is this that even 
winds and sea obey him. You see, in Matthew 8, 5 to 13, we read about the centurion. Now from 23 to 27, we read about what happened in the sea. Now, physically, he wasn't there at the house of the centurion. Physically, there, he wasn't anywhere near the miracle. The miracle took place? Yes, it did take place. But he wasn't anywhere near the miracle. But here, he was right inside the boat. Is God speaking to you? You may have Jesus right inside your boat, but still worry like these people. But there was this centurion who did not have Jesus. He said very deliberately, explicitly, he said, I don't even want you to have, have you come into my house because I am not worthy. And one account says, he did not even come to meet him and say that because he felt himself unworthy to come to Jesus. But there, his life changed. But there, Jesus turned towards his faith, towards what he said. So, always know one thing. Can I have the team back here? And let us stand to our feet. Know this one thing. God expects you to express your faith and express it in the right way. You need to speak what you ought to speak. Amen. You need to act according to what you are thinking. But now there, it goes to your thinking itself. So what you think matters. How you think matters. Now to train your thinking to train your thinking to do the right kind of thinking, right? See, if you need to build your body, you work out. Right? You work out to build your body. In the same way, if you need to train your mind, if you need to build your mind, can I say that? We're talking about building body in the gym and building your mind in the word. Only the word can train you to think the way you are supposed to think. And that is why the word is so important in every believer's life. This word can work even when, even when the situation looks unbelievably wrong. I don't know how to express the intents of the trouble that we can probably go through. It can be a great trouble. For one person, it is like that. For another person, it is another way. I can't experience the way you experience it. For me, once one, one trouble is something very tough, maybe. But for you, something else. It may, be, it may not be related to, to what I am experiencing. But whatever trouble that is, it may be unexplainable, unbelievably hard, call it whatever, but the Lord is above all this. Amen. This situation with the centurion servant was, he was, he was going, walking towards death. And now centurion turns it around. Centurion decides to turn the life of that man who was on the bed. And now that is in your hands. That is in your hands. You are able to turn the life of someone else around by your faith. So I'm not talking about your faith working just for you, but your faith can work for somebody else. Because God has called you to be the ministers of the new covenant. Ministers of the new covenant believe in what God does. Ministers of the new covenant believes not in their own doing, but in what the Lord can do and what He has already done. The new covenant is all about Him. It is not about you. It is not about man. It is about God. He did not say, if you do this, if you do that, if you do this. No, no. He said, I will do this. 
he did not get man to involve in what he promised oh he is not waiting for you to be qualified with something that you think can qualify you but you know what can qualify you in front of him your faith it's not anything physical that can qualify you in front of god but your faith will qualify you this man centurion got qualified by his faith and god jesus called that faith to be amazing it amazed jesus and that's the amazing faith that each of us can express and that amazing faith comes by trusting in the authority that jesus carries by your authority i believe in your authority i believe and in your authority if you say it will happen this should be this should be the base for every christian for every believer we build on this amen and that will amaze jesus can we close our eyes thank you jesus thank you jesus i speak fresh faith on all of these people today in jesus name in your presence i stand father i speak fresh faith coming upon these people today lord god let their minds be renewed with what they heard and let there be an outpour of fresh faith into their hearts fresh faith into their hearts and lord god we want to amaze you we want to amaze you at one point of time we are growing we have our own weaknesses we have our own doubts we have our fear but lord we know that you understand us today we have just come to you come to your throne room of grace boldly because jesus died for us because jesus shed his blood for us because the ransom was paid for our sake and so we come to your throne room boldly by the help of the holy spirit father we believe in the authority the sovereign authority that you carry in all of our lives we believe in your word your word can work wonders for us and now that you have said that you will hasten it lord we believe with all our hearts that you will do this quickly whatever you have promised to us whatever you have spoken to us whatever you have to turn around for us lord we believe it is going to happen very 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 quickly father give us the heart to accept what you have for us father we know that you always have good things for us your plans are always greater than our plans your ways are always greater than our own ways give us the heart to accept your plans and let us walk in your ways we thank you we thank you we thank you father god wherever we go we just pray that we will be your testimonies testimonies of your goodness and your glory in jesus name we pray amen now do we understand what faith is are we able to put ourselves in the place of a centurion are we able to put, get the word relate to what our life is 
Amen. Are we ready to move forward with this big thing called faith? That's the only thing that can move the Father's heart. Amen. Amen. And praise God that this faith, faith can be boosted and the Lord will help us increase our faith. Yes? Please be seated. Anyone here for the first time? Can you please stand up? God bless you. Hope you were blessed with the word. And Anchorage, is this our welcome? We don't need a reminder to say how Anchorage would welcome. Amen. This is home. And when someone comes home, how do we take care of the new person in the home? Amen. This is the house of the Lord. And we, when we call him Abba Father, and when we believe we are in the house of the Lord, how we were welcomed into this house is how we welcome everyone. Amen. God bless you, sister. May God keep blessing you, and may you take his portion. Hallelujah. Now after hearing this word of faith, are we ready to put our faith into action? Let's believe that whatever was commanded or whatever is written in the word will come to pass in our lives. Because Jesus said, as often as you come together, do this in remembrance of me. What? Partake of the body and blood of Jesus. Amen. He broke bread. He took the cup and he said, do this. In this is just to remind us that Jesus died for us. To heal us. To reconcile us back. Man to, the man back to God. To build our relationship. To be grateful. To heal us from all our diseases, not just physically, it's both mental and physical. How important it is for us to restore this relationship. It's all about a relationship. It's not a religion. It's not a ritual that we follow. It is about mending our relationship with the Father. Amen? Let's come forward take this portion and as we take this portion, let's remember as sinful as we are and as sinful as we were, God knew how we would be. Please come forward and take your portion. God knew what all we would do because He knew us even before we were created, even before we came here to the earth. He knew what we would be doing this day. So Jesus paid it all on the cross. Jesus paid it all on the cross for us way back. So there's no question of, I am sinning now. Is this also cleared? If at all you're sinning now and you say, Lord, I'm sorry. I just want your forgiveness. You will know that you are forgiven. Amen. It's not a future tense. It is a past it is a done work of Jesus. Let's not miss this portion. Let's not miss this moment. Let's remember what Jesus said. And let's speak in faith. Wherever, whatever is missing in our lives, let's speak over it. Speak life. Because the Lord has commanded us to speak to the dry situations speak to your dry bones speak to the valley that the valley will rise up that there will be life the dry bones will come together there will be tissues there will be sinews it will be covered with skin and the breath of God will bring life it's not 
just us speaking but as we speak with faith the breath of god comes the spirit of god comes there to kindle life amen Abba Father, we thank you for Jesus, we thank you for your love, and it is your love, Father God, that has given us this strength, this faith to stand and say we hold on to the living God. Thank you, Father for keeping your love so alive for showing us that your love has no barriers you have no reservation when it comes to us Father God you would do anything to redeem us you would do anything to forgive us anything to heal us and anything to take us back to your bosom even as we hold these symbols Father we pray that we will be restored. All our promises will be fulfilled and answered A and Amen. You are the Lord who hastens all that you have promised in your time. And Lord, give us the patience to hold on to cling on and even as we partake Father help us believe have faith in the new covenant life Father God that you will do all things for us with you nothing is impossible with you nothing is difficult and for you, nothing is difficult. And Lord, that you are a God who will strengthen us. With you in us, Father, we can do all things. We can leap over a wall. We can cross a mountain. Thank you, Father, for all that you've done and all that you're going to do in our lives and all that you're doing right now for us. Bless us, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's partake together.
hallelujah all the righteous people in the house will shout a hallelujah hallelujah amen what a privilege god has given us the privilege of calling him abba father and made us righteous to stand in his presence so as the righteous people we take this authority and we are going to bring down the walls of jericho down are you ready to bring down the walls the when i say walls of jericho you can bring to your remembrance all the struggles which you are holding on to for a very long time something which is bugging you for a very long time you are not able to come out of it you are not having the peace of god to pray over it so that is the wall of jericho it's the strong hold which is holding on to you so now this intercessory prayer time we are going to pray for those bondages to be broken and not only that we are going to stand in the gap for the people and intercede for the people who are struggling so are you ready you all just now claim that you all are righteous people so with that authority which god has given us god has given us the keys of the kingdom so whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever you bind i uh, mean release on earth it will be released in heaven Amen. that authority is given to you so don't ever think whether you are right in doing it god has given the authority claim it use it declare it are you ready we have three prayer points to be done today the first one you all are enjoying your salvation the very presence of you in this place indicates that you trust in the lord you have received the lord's love and affection you are enjoying it though you pass through the storms and waters and the fire you have come seeking the lord's presence just telling the lord yes lord i trust in you i know i'm going to come out of it and this the very presence indicates that and god really loves it and now you need to remember what about your family members who are not saved your own family if they have not saved if they have not accepted lord jesus christ as their personal savior will they enjoy the same thing will they enjoy the love will they be able to embrace the love of lord jesus will they have the same peace of god which you are having now in spite of going through the trials so god is telling you remember the members of your family the immediate family members are the far family members even though they are born again christians their lifestyle can be far from lord jesus christ they may not have the personal relationship with jesus christ so right now we are going to stand in the gap and pray for our members our family members asking god to in, uh, plead and convict them to to enjoy the unconditional love of lord jesus christ are you ready to do so can you all close your eyes remember the family members bring them into your mind say lord you were kind enough you showed favor upon me and i know that you have died for those people as well for my ma- family members as well we want your touch right now we want your heavenly touch to touch them father urushu durutu lord let your presence surround them let them be convicted right now you said in your words that you are the only way the one and only way the truth and the life without accepting you we can never enter into heaven lord let them realize that master let them be convicted of their sinful nature let them come into your presence and kneel down before you and have a personal relationship with you father let their intimate relationship you increase father god increase master master one time remember our members remember our family members father lord touch them turn their stone heart to fleshly heart lord let them enjoy 
your blessing master we don't want them to land up in hell lord we want to be enjoying the blessings in heaven we want them to enjoy the eternal life which you have destined for us father rukrut krut krut eladara tumnisha lord we receive it father we receive it heavenly god lord we receive we receive whatever you are putting into our hearts master lord we pronounce that upon those family members lord we'll declare that they will be changing today they are not it is not going to be delayed they will be changing today lord you are going to touch them today there will be a heart of conviction the holy spirit is going to move the holy spirit the holy spirit will move around them embrace them surround them and show them your love father thank you master thank you lord thank you with the authority which you have given us lord we release the blessing upon them we release the blessing of salvation upon them lord we want them to be saved come into your presence enjoy every single blessing lord thank you for removing the fear from those people thank you for making them clear in their mind that you alone are the living god you alone are the god alone almighty who has created them thank you master for turning their hearts thank you lord for assigning angels thank you holy spirit thank you lord for answering this prayer thank you master we are going to come and stand and testify that our members our family members have saved accepted lord jesus christ thank you lord we believe it master we believe it thank you father in jesus name amen, amen. now we are going to pray for uh, healing god is a god of miracles he is a healer he himself is a miracle when we welcome his presence of god automatically the healing power flows and specifically we are going to pray for brother gerard who is in the hospital he was recovering uh, recovering and he is still recovering we had been praying for him for the past 2 weeks and there are many changes in his uh, uh, body but now we are going to claim for the full recovery from the lord a god is a healing god we are going to uh, release the power of healing power into him and not only that we want him to tra- we want god to intervene in his life and transform his life and he is going to turn out to be a believer because he's got a great call in his life shall we pray for gerard each one of you we are going to be responsible as the anchorage members we are our our mission is to stand in the gap for the people and pray for the people so we take this opportunity we stand for brother gerard and we are going to claim our blessings and healing shall we all pray together in oneness lord we bring brother gerard into your hands he is your son you have chosen him you have put a call in him lord thank you for making him the minister of god father whatever he is undergoing right now we know that it is only temporary because you are intervening in his life you are touching his body right now yes lord let your presence surround the hospital let your presence surround his room right now let there be healing power flowing into that room father lord with the authority we claim the healing father we claim the healing we really is the fire anointing in that place lord not only is healing he is going to have an intervention with you he is going to encounter your face he is going to encounter your presence in that room after he comes out of the hospital he is going to testify that lord jesus came into my room he touched me he spoke to me he said a word to me and i got released i got released of my sickness thank you father thank you lord just as for the centurion you spoke a word with that belief master with the same belief with the same faith we receive that word that he is healed completely father we believe it and we take it master thank you for healing brother gerard thank you for touching brother gerard thank you for transforming his life thank you for creating an intimate relationship with brother gerard father thank you lord that he is going to testify he is going to stand as a minister of god and testify of your goodness to the people thank you master thank you for bringing him to anchorage to speak and testify in this place thank you lord for honoring our prayers in jesus name amen amen
lastly god was telling me that many of you in this place you're bound with laziness especially when it comes to the spiritual matters god wants to release you he says there are many clutches holding on to you like letharginess to read the bible only when you open your bible you feel like sleeping right even i have undergone that when you ask god sincerely and when you sit at his presence seeking for a word from the lord the word will turn you upside down it's not an ordinary word which god gives you it's a word which turns your life upside down for every problem you have a result here you have a solution here so it's your it's your responsibility to sit at his feet and seek for his word so from today you need to take a decision lord i i want to sit at your feet because this is a problem which is chasing me but i want the solution for it i want you to speak to me start asking god he is going to he is going to listen to you and today he is going to speak to you so the letharginess then ego and pride ego and pride ask god to fill you with humbleness come into his presence with humility your pride and ego has not brought you to this land your pride and ego and intellect has not brought you to this land or in the positions which you are in in your jobs it's the it's purely the lord's grace which has sustained you among your family members you have been set apart you have been chosen out to come and reside here for a purpose so ask come come with a humble heart before him your heart is transparent before the lord you can't hide anything before the lord so god wants to break all those chains which is holding on to you you are helpless you are unable to remove it and you won't be able to remove it unless god intervenes into your life so we are going to plead plead the lord's presence to remove all those bondages upanishad thank you father thank you master for showing us lord yes we commit we confess that there are many things holding on to us like ego and pride and laziness and the lust of flesh i rebuke it in the name of jesus so marish the taking away the time which you need to spend in the presence of lord so marish there is no authority for the lust of flesh it is coming through the eyes beware of what you watch god says beware of what you watch it is going into the mind and spoiling your mind god says read the word and renew the word will renew your mind the word will renew your mind thank you father thank you for pouring out your blood upon us father lord we need you we need you more and more we come into your presence we need your presence alone father lord we need you remo remo the bondage is father remo the clutches father we know only your presence can take it take it away father lord make me new make us new make us new forgive us for the for not spending the time with you father forgive us lord we need you father we need you lord we need you for my family we need you for the problem we don't want you to go away lord we want your presence to reside in our house we want you to be the head of the house thank you for removing the bondage father thank you for removing the clutches lord thank you thank you father thank you lord thank you master thank you thank you the chains are being broken as you are thanking him as you are praising him it's just being removed the crush thank you father thank 
you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, glorious Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for listening to our prayers. Thank you for saving our family members. Thank you for healing Brother Gerard. Thank you for removing all the bondages which was holding on to us. Lord, we rely on you. We don't have anybody else other than you. We trust in you. We hold on to you. And we believe all these miracles are following us. And the favor of God is chasing us. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah.